So this is going to be our stud that we're machining for the uh, compound, the lathe compound that's got the uh, 40 position tool post on it. And I'll start with the, uh, the uh, imperial size down, the, the side that's going to screw down into the, the T-nut. We're going to do a 3 quarter 10 thread and I've got to machine this to fit the bottom of the compound there. So we'll do this side first and then we'll flip it around and we'll finish this out because I'll have to do the change gears for our 14 millimeter pitch. Uh, plenty of room there to do our turning that we need. Our thread length is going to be three quarters, so we'll just do our offset for that one first. Turn that down to uh, three quarter and uh, thread at ten threads per inch. Got our three quarter turned to size. This is going to be thirty millimeters. We're going to go ahead and turn that so we don't have but about maybe. Uh, 70,000 to come off of it. This will fit the bottom counter bore of the tool post. size there we need to do an undercut thread relief we'll do that next all right this is going to be our thread relief here just go in the double depth of the thread and go 130 thousandths the most frustrating thing about this lathe is that that chatter that I get, I got to get into the headstock and see if I can adjust the spindle bearings. I keep putting it off. You get it down slow enough, it usually gets it gets it done for you. There we go. Measure our depth. All right, we're going to go ahead and start our thread now. We've got our cross slide set to a zero with an indicator over here as a backup. And we will touch off right there. We've got a crisp brand new insert on that tool. Go ahead and do a scratch pass and uh, see what it looks like. See if I am cutting a 10 pitch thread because we're cutting three quarter ten. All right, that looks good. We're right on what we need to be. Go ahead with it. Taking 10 a pass here on the compound. It's 
what I thought. The uh, the tool chipped out right there. All right, I need to index this uh, tool around because it chipped the corner. That's probably this is one of my older inserts that I haven't used in a while because I was out of the ones that I like. And uh, I never have a problem with the other ones chipping right off the bat like that. All right, we got that tools index. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it right where it was at and make, make another cut to clean it. go find my gauge. I haven't done that yet for uh, checking the, the pitch. Alright, see we've got our gauges right here. We've got a go gauge that has the pitch listed on there and then we've got our uh, no-go gauge which is slightly under the go gauge. So once you get it threaded to this one here, this one should not be able to screw on there. If it does, you've got actually got it cut undersized. So we're going to go, this is uh, 0.682 on the pitch there. And then I've got my uh, thread pitch mic here for 8 to 13 threads per inch. So I can use this to measure the pitch diameter and get us in there really, really close. So these are a little touchy to use. You have to be really, I mean, just dead nut center of it. And I did not. I didn't get. The, I didn't. Ha I wasn't on the anvil right. I had it twisted. There we go. All right. That feels pretty good right there. We're at 712, so we got a little ways to go. Go ahead and just uh, get it down there a little closer. I already knew that I was off quite a bit, but I like to sneak up on it. Go ahead and do a spring cut through there. Okay. This is where I like using my air just to knock those chips off there. And I'll just keep doing this until we get it to where we want it on our, uh, on our proper pitch there. I went ahead and just got that finished out there. I uh, finished it at uh, 0.681 on the uh, thread pitch mic. And this is our go gauge there. It's still got a really nice fit. Goes all the way on. I've already uh, filed the thread. All right, we'll take this one off here. And uh, this is our no go gauge. Let's see. And it does not want to go on there. All right, so it be a should, should be a good fit right there. This is turned to size, so we'll go ahead and take it out. Uh, we'll go ahead and test fit it in our uh, T-nut down there, and then we'll go ahead and finish out that other side. All right, here's our test fit. Let's screw it in there just like it should. All right, so we know that that thread is going to work. And we'll check it in the bottom of the uh, tool post here. I'm just going to go in backwards with it. So this is the journal that it fits right there. Just like so. All right, time to get the other side done now. What I did was I made a little blue mark there and my uh, used my calipers to scribe a line just a little further out from what this shoulder length is going to be. I want this to be uh, 937 there on this uh, shoulder from here to the other side. I'll just use this as a visual reference. We're gonna come in here real close with my tool. I'm just eyeballing that. I'm gonna set my zero. And that's gonna give me a little extra room to face that. We'll be able to measure that with calipers once we get the uh, shoulder established there. Just gonna clean that face up a little bit. I've got about an extra 16th on the length and if we're on the outer end where the threads are, that's not a big deal there.
All right, we're down to our finished cut for that journal there, which is going to be 20 millimeter. I just split the difference and took about half of what I needed to come off there. Now I need to get in there and uh, finish out the shoulder the way I want to. And then we'll just get it measured and faced out the way I want it. We're around 940 would be good, so we'll do another 12 thousandths there. I'm gonna cut a little small radius in that corner right there. That's why I left some of that meat. This is gonna be our 14 millimeter end here. 14 mil with a uh, some threads machine on the very end of it for the nut. Just undercutting the uh, the thread in here, five thousandths. But I got that turned to exactly 14 mil. That's good there. That's the that's where the end of the threads will be. So uh, my plan was for the two shoulders there. We're going to use a uh, 433 sized insert to get in there and uh, machine a little radius in the corner. All right, guys, we're ready to cut this uh, metric pitch thread. I've got the uh, change gear already set up to uh, cut 1.5, and that's what that's what we want to do. We've already got. Let's see, we're touched off. We're going to do our scratch pass, and uh, you know what? I let's see. Okay, I got my pitch gauge right here, so let's roll with it, and we're just going to go to that little shoulder. I tell you what, let's make a little mark right there. Just gonna go to that line right there. All right, let's put our little radius down in there. It's our thread relief. We're gonna go, let's go like 65 thousandths. Just like that, in and out, so it won't start chattering on me. All right, now we're ready to start cutting our metric pitch. Let's roll with it. barely did scratch that. I should have fed in a little, I guess. <laughs> so let's try that again. There we go. Cut. All right, we look good to go. That's a 1.5, so we got to... I'm doing the uh, reverse method on, well, disengage the half nut, doing the metric like I've shown before. And I just reverse it and line back up on my tick mark that I had uh, started on. What I'll do is we'll just use the nut as our gauge. I don't actually have any um, go gauges for that size thread, so we'll just use our nut and thread it just to fit the nut. That didn't do very good. That's the tools that already chipped on me again. Yep. <laughs> Man, that is one sorry insert right there. All right, I'm going to go. It's just doing that because the chip, the uh, insert chipped on me. 
man, I cannot rely on that insert right there. So let me go ahead and back it up so that I don't lose my place here. And I'm going to put a different insert on there. And hopefully it'll line up to where I want. Some days, things just don't go your way. The insert was not lined up with the thread perfectly the way I want, so I'm just manually lining it up. I've got my depth set there where I want on the compound. I've already got a new zero established on the cross slide, so it should come in there. Yep. So I'm gonna back out, just reverse it. And I'll just come in a little, a little shy of what our finish is, and let's see. We hit it. We just got to get in there and clean it all up now. Man, that can be frustrating. There's one thing I hate about carbide threading inserts is that they'll chip on you at the worst possible time. And then making you look like you don't know what you're doing. I went back to my go-to threading insert, which is an ISCAR insert, and it's, they always do good. They just, you know, the corner breaks down after a little while. I think I finally hit the bottom of it right there. I'm not gonna be able to get the nut on there far enough. Almost there. It's a, it's a little bit, little bit tight. So let's skin it a little bit more. I'm just using straight end feed here, trying to clean up both sides of the, the thread. There we go. Okay. I think we got it now. I'm trying not to get it too loose, so that's pretty good. I think we'll just hit it with a, a file. File the top. It's got a little bit of burr on the top, and we'll be done with that. We got this thread file right here that I used to uh, run through there like this and just kind of make sure there's no burrs on it sticking to the inside of the thread there. I filed the top. All right, I think we got a good fit on our nut now. All right, what's left? I need to do a chamfer here, here. I need to polish this a little bit and then that'll be done. stick this one out just stick it out a little bit all right got some cleaner I can use to wipe that blue off there let's go test fit it all right there's our stud 
Ooh, man, that is a nice fit right there. Look at that. Perfect. And I forgot, we, <laughs> we still got to drill this guy out right there. So I'm going to have to do that before I finish putting it all together. So it looks like everything, everything's going to work out right where I want it there too. Man. Got our other piece right there. Yep. Once we get this drilled, we, I'm gonna go over to the lathe and just run a. Uh, we'll probably just drill it. That way, that'll slide down on there, and then we can test fit everything. All right. I'm gonna knock this out real quick, and then we'll finish our assembly. All right, let's do our little test fit here. The only thing left that I'm going to do, I'm going to mill some um, wrench flats in this so that you can use a wrench to tighten it up because it needs to be snug in these uh, in this threaded hole here. All right, and then we've got our this is our six millimeter pin. Install that guy right there. All right, so here's the piece that we just bored out to a 14 and. Okay, so it fits there. We got our pin in there. Look at that. Lines up on that pin. All right. We got this piece here. It's going to sit down inside there like so. This cover plate goes onto the top there. Just like that. Yep, just like that. I'm not going to put the uh, spring on, by the way, but we will go ahead and put our pointer on here. Just like that. And you can position that however you need to, wherever you're going to center up your uh, compound on. And then our nut. There we go. All right, it looks good. Excited to about have this one done. So take it all back apart. We'll go do our very last stop on the mill, get our wrench flats, and then this job will be finished up. All right, I got you set up on the mill. We got, we're using our uh, super spacer right here, and we're just going to cut two flats on it. All right, we're going to make the flat so to fit a one inch wrench. So you can either use a one inch wrench or a uh, adjustable wrench, whichever one. Uh, he would prefer really we're going to do our touch off here which is right there all right so we're at 1.181 so we're going to take half of that we're just going to go up uh, let's see let's go up 90 91 thousandths right there we're going to lock our table Tell you what, let me grab a little bit of uh, cutting oil. Got some right here, I think. That's a brand new 5 8 end mill there. All right, that's one side.
Zero. I started on 180, now we're at zero there. Okay, there we go. There's our one inch wrench right there. All right, it fits. So like I said, you can use that or you can just grab one of these fit them all wrenches right here like that and use that if you want to. All right. All right, well, there's our stud completely finished up. I did a little extra polishing on it and then I deburred the sharpness off of the uh, rinse flats there where I milled it. So this thing is ready to go back together and we'll do another test fit here. I thought I would uh, mention, you know, the way that I machined this right here, the T-nut. I had, I had shared a couple pictures on Instagram as, I, as I've been doing this and I had several people uh, leave comments saying that uh, that's incorrect and why did you do it that way? You should have done it this way. There should be an air gap between the uh, bottom of the tool post right here and the uh, top of that T-nut, which is not the information that I was given from the manufacturer of this tool post here. I was actually shown a photograph saying that the T-nut should be bolt, bolted in there with either set screws or you can use some bolts to bolt it down in there and then machine or surface grind the top of this so that this is pulling with full contact on this face right there. And you should not have an air gap between this face and this face right there. So the way that I did it, I was just using the set screw method, which pushes it up against the T, the T slot right there. Another way you could do it is uh, just drill the holes here, do some countersunk holes and actually tap the bottom of the compound and bolt the T, the T nut down into the compound. You know, I don't, I don't really know if that's any, any better than the way I did it right here, if it's any stronger, but I think this is uh, suitable right here. And I think it's gonna work fine. So I'm, I'm, I made this off of the uh, recommendation of the manufacturer, and that's why I did it just like this right there. So we've got full contact there on this face, all right? And the T-nut is still holding in, into that slot right there. So let's go ahead and do a, uh, we'll do our last fit up here. The other thing that I was uh, point, gonna point out too is the placement of this pin right here. So once this thing is all together, this pin, this may, this may be clocked or timed in a position where you can't get your tool exactly square. It depends on how, you know, I run my compounds at a 30 degree angle. It's always set there and my tool post is always square to the alignment of the spindle there. And this pin, the way I've got it drilled may cause a problem. And I think that really what you, what you have to do is get this set up on the lathe where you want it bolted in there all right mount your tool post where you where you want it get it mounted get it indicated i always indicate the face of my tool blocks to make sure they're perfectly aligned and then once that's indicated and this is tight then you could simply transfer punch one of these hole locations somewhere you know you can just line it up on this side if this one's not working just go over here uh, transfer punch the hole location and drill it yourself. So Joseph could possibly do that. You just need a you know six millimeter drill and a transfer punch to do that. So I, I wanted to mention that as well. So let's go ahead and get this piece screwed in there. We'll pull our pin back out and we'll use our one inch wrench just to snug it like that. But it needs to be tightened down a little more than that. And we'll put our pin in there and we'll drop this down on there just like so that is a good fit right there and then we've got this guy and we've got our plate that goes on the top it's got our divisions on it there we go just like that and then we've got our pointer it goes on there like that and then you also got the spring as I showed that uh, you know goes in that notch right there and just holds the pointer down and then we've got our flange nut looks like everything lined up good there we go there it is 
just sticking up just a little bit. I filed the corner of this so it's round, so you're not going to, you know, hit your arm or your hand on that and cut yourself. And there we have it. A completed job. All right, Joseph, we got you finished up. And I hope all you guys and gals enjoyed watching the project. We're going to get this boxed up and send it back out to them. And we'll catch you on the next one, all right? See you guys later. I want to show you guys this really sweet care package that was sent to me by Jordan over at Master Machine Manufacturing. They're uh, located up near the uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma area. And they have a few products that they manufacture here uh, in the States. And uh, they're, they seem to be very proud of their company and the products that they produce. But uh, let me just pull these things out and show you what they sent. They've got a couple of main featured items that they uh, manufacture. And uh, this is one of them right here. They make these uh, quick vice handles in two different sizes. So this is for the larger vices, like an eight inch uh, milling vise. This has the seven eight hex there. And then this one is the, uh, has the three quarter hex machine in it for all of your standard uh, six inch milling vices. They do a very beautiful job on the machining. They machine them, they anodize them. They've got their company logo, you know, engraved in there. And the handle itself pivots, it spins, very nice and smooth. So you got a nice range of motion right there, very smooth to the feel whenever you're using it and just beautifully made. They do an excellent job making their products. And not just that, the other thing that stood out to me as soon as I opened the box is the way everything is packaged too. You know, everything is wrapped up nice and tight in bubble paper. Look, they got their own stickers there. You know, that's always a nice touch to see that kind of stuff there as well. And you can tell that they just put a lot of pride in everything that they make and how they, uh, how they share it with everybody. This is the other product that they make right here, one of their, one of their big hits. So they call these the Piranha Jaws. Let me show you this. So I've already opened these up and I wanted to uh, mention that when I first opened them up they were wrapped up in the uh, volatile paper to protect them from uh, moisture getting on them. All right, But look at the box right here. Let me pull the jaws out and show you. Just look at that box. <laughs> it's an American flag. How cool is that? I mean they just take a lot of pride in not only their, their parts but how they package it and market it as well. You know this is just a nice touch to uh, go the extra effort to uh, show things like this, you know? So as I said, they're very proud of what they make and I, I absolutely love it. So these are the uh, Piranha Jaws right here. These are made for six inch milling vices. So this will fit your Kurt or any of the six inch style of um, milling vices right here. They got their logo machine in it, engraved. And you can see the top, this is why they call them the Piranha Jaw. So they have a shelf machined in on there, like a built-in parallel, and all these grooves milled into it as well. And they said that what this does, I, I actually haven't used this yet, but I read about them, and he told me about them. These provide a lot of extra holding power on a part whenever you're you know, holding it to do milling. I think these are pretty widely used now in modern CNC machining. So you got a large piece of aluminum that you're uh, clamping in here that you're doing a bunch of high speed milling on. This will give you a lot of holding power for that workpiece right there. You've got the uh, scale engraved on the top of it. So these are eight inches wide. You got a zero point right there in the middle that measures out to each side. They are reversible. So you can catch it on either side of the jaw that you want. And they're just beautifully made. They're uh, machined from 4140, heat treated, and in ground, uh, ground to size there. So very cool stuff. And then back to the packaging again. <laughs> That's one of their stickers right there. And I believe this is, uh, all right, so proudly packaged by Brandon Wright on 528-2020 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's got a signature on there. So, you know, this is just a, an extra little thing that they throw in the box. But I believe it's this guy right here. I believe that's Brandon. So that's one of the stickers I'll throw up on the, uh, on the cabinet. And there's a little brochure that talks about the, uh, you know, the Piranha Jaws and the, uh, the vice handles there, the quick vice handle. They have, they have them in different types of uh, colors for, you know, your choosing, whatever you'd like. 
they did throw in a couple other little promotional things we got a bottle opener right there and then this guy i absolutely love this this is one of their can koozies and look at that made in the usa it's got the uh, satin black finish on it and they got their logo on the other side their social media links there and this is made to hold uh, standard size uh, 12 ounce cans right there and i've already put it to the test and used it this has got a, like a nice lip seal right there on the top so it really seals in the cold inside the uh, the koozie there and you can also put this uh, this lid on it there if you want to use it for uh, sipping so very cool stuff man they uh they look like they have a great product, a great company to work for, and I love all of their packaging, and I look forward to uh, having these uh, quick vice handles to use, and I look forward to putting these on the cart and let's putting them to the test and seeing how they do. So check them out, mmmusa.com. They got a really nice product there. So uh, Jordan, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.